Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Uh, we finished off with a failing test, and that's always a great way to remind you where to, yourself where to pick up. And what we were doing was just getting next year working in stock market year. Uh, it, needed, it needs to increment the year. So let's see if that works. Yeah, it does. So I think we're pretty much done with stock market year for now. Now back in the stock market, um, uh, that should be working, it is, actually. But in the stock market table model, rather than asking for the year, or calculating the year, we can just ask the year for the year. And that, I hope, will work. Yes, it will. So let's just do our desk check real quick. Yep, it looks like everything's working. Um, just a quick sanity check. 11,000, 12, 1, 13, 13. That looks all pretty much right. Now there is that cumulative rounding error as a result of us uh, snipping off our integers. Um, I wonder if maybe that's going to be a problem. It's already added, it added up to two and a half dollars at this point. Yeah, that's actually pretty significant, isn't it? 67,257 versus 67,274. Hmm. Well, I'm going to make a note on that to fix that. That is that is a perfect example of why these desk checks are important. Um, you can theorize as much as you want, but um, but your theory can be wrong. So it's important to test your assumptions. Okay, so stock market's looking pretty good. I want to rename this. It's not so much get year as get year from start. That's a terrible name, but I'll, that'll have to do for now. Actually, I should say get year offset. Doesn't speak terribly clearly, but I think it'll have to do. Okay. I think we're doing everything we need to do there. Here, we can get rid of starting year, which means that we no longer need that parameter in the stock market table model, which is great. Now that's nice and simple. That's what I like to see. What we're doing is we're taking our fundamental domain object and we're converting it to something the table cares about. Really simple, really clean. I like this a lot. That is very, very nice. Let's make sure, <laughs> let's make sure it works. It can be nice as I want, but if it doesn't work, it's no good. All right, okay. So that's pretty clean. Let's move on to something else. Uh, I think I do want the year concept to be an object, so maybe I'll do that. We've also got to do the fail fast. We've done this. Yay. We need to create packages. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to just quickly let's see. We've got finances, and we'll make a UI package and a, a domain package. Let's see, dollars. Man, I love these automated refactorings. Um, when I first started doing Agile and test-driven development and refactoring, I wasn't using Smalltalk. Uh, and outside of Smalltalk, there were no automated refactoring tools. So 
and I had to walk uphill both ways uh, in the snow to work every day. So it, this is really nice, being able to do this auto, all automatically. Because renaming, a na renaming classes and renaming packages was one of the most painful things, especially since we were using CDS, which didn't like it when you renamed things. Okay, cool beans. All righty. Now we can scratch that one off the list. Let's go ahead and make, I'm afraid that, you know, this is yet another cleanup. You're seeing the rhythm that happens here. There's a small rhythm when I'm doing test-driven development of fumbling and then passing and then failing and then passing. And then there's a somewhat larger rhythm of making the code bigger and uglier and then improving, cleaning up, making it smaller and, and cleaner. And uh, the exciting parts are always the making it big and uglier parts, but the the really important part is making it smaller and cleaner. Um, because even though you're not adding anything new, you are making it possible for you to continue making improvements in the future. So I want to introduce the idea of a year. And this is going to be yet another value object. Okay, other than that, years don't really do much. Um, I think the only actual functionality I want to have in here is that a year will know what the next year is. And maybe in the future we'll know what the previous year was too, but I don't really expect to need that. All right, there we've got our year. So now. Inside of stock market year, we should be able to uh, convert that. I'm going to try something a little daring. I'm going to do this not in a small step. And uh, as a result, you will probably see why I always take small steps. Let's see if I can make it. This is so simple, though, and it's barely in use. I am hoping it will work. <laughs> uh, I'm going to regret this. Okay, I'm not that brave. I could have turned this into a year two, but I'm going to do it in smaller steps than that. I'm hoping this will work. No, of course it didn't. What did I do wrong? Oh, well, that's not so bad.
You know, it just occurs to me, I don't think I ever check Um, I don't think I ever check. Yeah, I check the number of years, but I don't ever check that the last year is correct like I do in the other case. does fail fast in a, in a way, but I'd like it to fail fast a little better. Okay, so, um, yeah, I've kind of gotten lost here, and that's because I took such a big step. But let's go ahead and convert this to use, um, to use years here. At least, I'm going to do that, but um, I don't think we're going to get very far. We're about out of time. Oh, and this is interesting. Number of years isn't going to work. I'm going to have to write some code around that. Let's back this up. And uh, next time, let's make sure this all still works. Yeah. So next time, that's where we'll pick it up. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.